Before I start, I want to mention that this video is brought to you by The Great Courses Plus, a subscription, on-demand video learning service where you can enjoy lectures and courses from top professors from around the world. More on The Great Courses Plus and how you can enjoy a free trial later in the video. In the modern day, mankind likes to think that every mystery is solved. History is at an end, and we stand upon the pinnacle of civilization. Yet, this is not true. For all our technological advancement and centuries of effort, many things still elude us. With this in mind, here are five mysterious archaeological discoveries which have perplexed experts. In 1958, a site in the area of Anatolia in southern Turkey was excavated by British archaeologist James Mellart and his team. What they discovered was extraordinary. The remains of an ancient settlement that dated from roughly 7500 BC to 5700 BC, named Katoyhayuk. As more of the site was uncovered, the archaeologists discovered that in this ancient town, Thousands of people lived clustered in a large mud-brick structure with no windows or doors to the outside. It is thought that the only way in or out of the settlement was through the roof with ladders. From there, the inhabitants would scale down further ladders into individual dwellings. Inside the windowless town, there were neither streets nor alleyways. People would simply enter through roof hatches and then walk through other people's homes to get to their own home. As they saw so much passing traffic, it is theorized that the roofs became the town's communal area, and would have joined together to form elevated roads and gathering spots. Far from being dim and grimy, the rooms inside were kept immaculately clean, being well furnished for the times, and having rudimentary rubbish disposal facilities. The inhabitants themselves seem to have had a high level of sophistication, with cooking facilities, wall paintings, and ventilation. It was clear to the archaeologists that the people of Katalayuk were culturally sophisticated. Yet, for all of this, something did not make sense. Why did such a sophisticated civilization choose to live with no windows or doors to the outside? Was there a sinister reason for their self-inflicted incarceration? One suggestion is that it was fear that kept these ancient people barricaded inside their windowless homes. So, what were they afraid of? During excavations at the site, wall paintings depicting enormous animals and small people were discovered. Some have theorized that the disproportionately large animals expressed the people's fear of wild animals. Next to them, the people of the settlement felt small and vulnerable. Such terror would help to explain why the settlement was built to only be accessed by ladders, with no windows and doors that animals could get in through. Indeed, large wild boars have been known to have seriously injured and even killed human beings. Yet, even with this consideration, the windowless building is a rarity compared to other settlements that would have also had dangerous interactions with wild boars. Might there have been other beasts in the area, perhaps ones which no longer exist, that may have justified such a heightened sense of dread? As time went on, however, the people of the settlement began interacting more with the outside world, by eating meat and engaging in agriculture. Even so, they continue to live a cloistered existence. It has been suggested that whilst the structure may have been built initially for protection from savage animals, as the civilization evolved, so did the windowless building's purpose. One notion is that the structure perpetuated a sense of equality in its inhabitants. In other words, the dark, cell-like rooms acted as a sinister form of social control. After all, archaeological studies of the site have revealed that the society that lived in the building had no hierarchy and displayed signs of gender equality. As the town moved away from its hunter-gatherer origins, Farming and other enterprises would have given some of its residents the opportunity to accumulate more goods than others. 
This would have introduced a sense of inequality, which would have no doubt been exacerbated by confined living conditions. It has been suggested that despite attempts at equality, violence was used in an attempt to regulate and equalize society. Such violence can be seen on skulls found at the site, which bear traces of non-fatal impact injuries. It has been theorized that the social tensions created by growing inequality amongst the different residents may have led to the breakdown of society and the eventual abandonment of the site. With all this in mind, it may then be that the purpose of the town's enclosure was not to keep something out, but rather to keep everyone in and the same. As the current director of the excavation, Ian Hodder, has stated, it might not have been the nicest society to live in. However, for all these theories, no one truly knows the hows or whys of the settlement, or indeed, how it fell. The mystery remains, with much of the site still to be uncovered. In 2013, during a controlled excavation of Katsuren Castle in Okinawa, Japan, experts encountered a small, unexpected object, a copper Roman coin from the 4th century AD. The coin caused an immediate sensation. After all, there are no known links of any direct contemporary connection between the ancient Roman Empire and Japan. Some have suggested that the coin was a mere curiosity kept at the site, having somehow made its way there after the fall of the Roman Empire. This has, after all, been the case in other discoveries, and it is known that some authentic and fake Roman coins have been found being used as decorations in China. Ancient tools for producing imitation Roman coins have even been found in Southeast Asia. However, the coin found at Okinawa was made of copper and represented very little value, either monetarily or decoratively. One would expect that Roman coins used for decoration, especially within a castle, would be those made of gold. This coin was not, and no gold coins were found at the site either. How and why this meager coin ended up so far away from Rome is a mystery. It is, of course, widely known that the Roman Empire was not an insulated state. The Empire had large territorial holdings around the Mediterranean Sea in Europe, and stretched across to the British Isles, down to North Africa, and into West Asia. Its trading links were vast, with some even theorizing that the Empire's reach was greater than that which has been accepted with the Romans possibly even having pre-Columbian contact with the New World. Surprisingly, these theories do have some evidence to support them, with a depiction of what appears to be a pineapple, which was not imported to Europe until after Columbus, being depicted in a fruit bowl in a floor mosaic in Pompeii. Whether it is a pineapple or not has been disputed, but the question as to how much interaction the Romans had with the rest of the world is constantly being revisited. Roman coins have been found circulating during the time of the empire in India, Southeast Asia, and even northern China. Indeed, there is even a story of a Roman embassy traveling to China during the second century AD. The Romans were an incredibly advanced civilization, arguably only being surpassed in modern times. And, as only a small percentage of Roman records have survived to this day, it may be that archaeology is only scratching the surface of the capabilities of one of the largest empires the world has ever seen. And, with a Roman coin being found in Japan, one cannot help but wonder just how great was the Roman Empire's reach. In the 1960s, archaeologists from the University of Chicago in Istanbul examined a site in southeastern Turkey which they disregarded as a medieval cemetery. Whilst they were quick to dismiss the find, their research did not go unnoticed by the German archaeologist Klaus Schmidt. After examining their papers, he believed that there could be something prehistoric at the site. He was right. 
1995, Schmidt discovered the first T-shaped megalith on the site now known as Gobekli Tepe. It would, however, take until 2007 for the excavation of Gobekli Tepe to be in full motion. Over the years, a vast complex of Stonehenge-like structures have been uncovered. Not only are the structures vast and impressive, combined they are the oldest known Neolithic site in the world. Even then, what has been uncovered is thought to represent only around 5% of the entire archaeological site. It is for this reason that it has been hailed by experts as one of the most significant finds of our time, with archaeologist Ian Hodder of the University of Stanford stating Gobekli Tepe changes everything. Its tremendous archaeological importance is largely due to its age. The site is 11,000 years old, meaning that it was constructed 6,500 years before the Great Pyramid of Giza. This was a time when people were primarily hunter-gatherers, people who are not believed to have possessed any technology or adequate social structures to have enabled them to move incredibly heavy objects that weighed multiple tons, namely those stone pillars found at Gobekli Tepe. Even the wheel was yet to be invented. The site seems to be lacking any evidence of dwellings. It is also littered with animal bones from wild game, which would indicate that the people who built this immense structure continued to be hunter-gatherers. With the apparent lack of basic technologies and settled society, the how and why Gobekli Tepe was constructed remains a mystery. A researcher of prehistory, Graham Hancock, believes the site was created after the trauma of a great cataclysm, namely a comet impact. He has suggested that the event imbued people in the area with a need to appease the gods and create a temple of sorts. More mainstream archaeologists also believe that the site was built for ritual purposes. The initial excavator, Klaus Schmidt, was one of the first to present this theory. Today, the idea that Gobekli Tepe is the world's first temple is challenging the orthodox belief that man learned to farm and create tools before building megalithic structures. Gobekli Tepe suggests an alternative possibility that human beings invented tools, organized labor, and started to settle down in order to build megalithic structures. In other words, the urge to worship sparked civilization. Whatever the case may be, with only a fraction of the whole site having been uncovered, with pictograms believed to be the earliest ever made yet to be fully analyzed, Gobekli Tepe no doubt holds more secrets. As work continues at the site, it can be hoped that we will soon learn more about the origins of civilization. As the world entered the 20th century, one of the most remarkable artifacts of the ancients was discovered. The strange object was found by sponge divers off the Greek coast. It was when they were scouring the seabed for food that they stumbled upon a remarkable shipwreck. Dozens of marble statues and vast amounts of rich pottery and artifacts were scattered across the ocean floor. It was an ancient treasure ship, with coins on board dating it to around 70 BC. Amongst its treasures, something different was discovered. A peculiar looking device which appeared to be made from a series of gears. The records that have survived from the time were not able to identify the device, and so for decades it remained untouched. It wasn't until Derek John de Sola Price, a scientist and researcher, studied the object now known as the Antikythera Mechanism that conclusions about its purpose were able to be made. Based on his observations, he stated that it was his belief that the object was an ancient analog computer, a device that could be used as a sort of astronomical calendar so as to figure out the placement of the sun and moon. He wrote down these observations in 1974, but many were skeptical of his claims. Then, in 2005, experts used X-ray tomography to reveal a three-dimensional model of the device. Price was proven right. The ancient Greeks had managed to create what has been called the most remarkable artifact of ancient science. 
The device comprised 30 gears arranged inside a wooden box with a hand crank. By turning the crank, anyone could determine where the sun, moon and planets would be at that time, what phase the moon would be on that night, predict future eclipses, and even figure out when the next Olympic Games were to be held. The ancient Greeks had invented a computer. Data relating to time and space had been programmed into an analogue device, which, through the use of a hand crank, could regurgitate appropriate and specific information dependent upon the user's requirements. Nothing as impressive as this had been discovered before. Despite its purpose being ascertained, the mechanism was still an enigma. Why had only one of these ancient devices been discovered? What happened to this type of invention, and indeed, its inventor? Inventions such as the mechanism were highly prized in the ancient world. A device similar, but nowhere near as well developed or intricate, had been crafted by the ancient inventor and polymath Archimedes in Syracuse. The ancient Romans describe how he made two spheres that could be used to tell the positions of the sun and moon. When Syracuse was conquered, the Roman general at the head of the army took these two spheres as his only share of the loot, loot which comprised a spectacularly wealthy hoard taken from the city during its sacking. That a general was only interested in Archimedes' invention indicates just how prized ingenuity and invention was by these ancient people. This deepens the mystery as to why the Antikythera mechanism, a far superior artifact, is so singular and unknown. In an attempt to explain the mechanism, some have linked the device to the genius Archimedes. However, he was much older than the shipwreck where the mechanism was found having died in 212 BC. Experts place the most likely date of the mechanism between 130 and 170 BC. While some researchers see the mechanism as part of a tradition that would lead to the development of other astronomical devices, it is perhaps more likely that it was a wholly unique invention that left no heritage except that on the ocean floor. It may very well have been the invention of an as of yet unknown, unaffiliated ancient genius. Eric von Daniken, a researcher into fringe archaeology, has even suggested that the device may have an otherworldly origin. Such is the awe that the mechanism's genius has inspired. Arguably, nothing truly comparable would be invented until the 14th century, with the invention of the Ori. It would take over a millennia for people to be able to rival an unknown genius of the ancient world. Before we take a look at our final mysterious discovery, I want to talk about how it is that I do my research. I believe that quality of information is massively important, and so I always try to make sure my sources are reliable and detail rich. The research for this video in particular would not have been possible without Professor Bradley E. Schaefer's lectures on the Antikythera Mechanism, available on The Great Courses Plus. The Great Courses Plus has an extensive library of over 11,000 video lectures from professors from the Ivy League and other prestigious universities, as well as from experts from places like the Smithsonian and National Geographic. By using my link in the description, you can access all of this, courtesy of a free trial. So, if you would like to watch the lecture I did, you can go ahead and do so. Professor Schaefer passionately discusses the mechanism in detail over two lectures, explaining the story behind how it was discovered, as well as proposing a possible origin date and designer. And if you would like to learn about something else, then The Great Courses Plus will undoubtedly inspire you just by visiting their homepage, with lectures and courses on everything from science to food to photography to mathematics. If you want to learn more about archaeological mysteries, Professor Eric H. Klein's lecture on Gobekli Tepe and other archaeological sites will have you hooked. There truly is no better place on the internet if you enjoy learning. The Great Courses Plus provides an Ivy League education at your convenience. And as I said, you can try it all for free, and in doing so, show support for my channel. Just go to thegreatcoursesplus.com forward slash paranormal scholar, or click the link in the description. In 
1667, Jesuit father Athanasius Kircher wrote an encyclopedic text called China Illustrata. In his book, he compiled reports from his fellow Jesuits out east to give the Western world at large an account of China. Amongst the many things he described were pyramids. Unfortunately, this account never became popular, and consequently, the world remained unaware of Chinese pyramids until the 20th century. In the 1940s, US Army pilot James Gorsman and Colonel Maurice Sheehan, the Far Eastern director of Transworld Airlines, both reported seeing a great white pyramid with a jeweled capstone in the Chinese province of Shanxi. The pyramid supposedly measured over 1,000 feet tall, making it larger than any pyramid in Egypt. The New York Times and the Los Angeles Daily Express both published Xi'an's story alongside a photograph. This caused a sensation, and many were eager to follow up the claims. However, a few days later, the authorities from the Chinese province of Nanking sent a letter to the Associated Press. They stated that the existence of such pyramids is not backed up by evidence. After that, the story of the Chinese pyramids was largely archived. In 1974, four farmers digging a well in the same province as where the pilots saw their pyramid discovered what is popularly known as the Terracotta Army. More than 8,000 foot soldiers and 130 chariots with 520 horses, as well as many other figures made of terracotta, were found protecting the deceased body of China's first emperor. The emperor's necropolis was constructed with the aid of over 700,000 conscript laborers, who, after completing their work, were made to share a place next to their emperor in the afterlife their enforced silence protecting the secret of his pyramid. Today, the tomb of the Emperor remains unopened, with the 8,000 Terracotta Army soldiers believed to represent just a small part of the full complex. After researchers analyzed the area with ground-penetrating radar, it is thought that the complex encompasses a massive 38 square miles. Even in this well-known archaeological site, Excavations are severely limited. No one knows what lies in the Emperor's tomb, or what other secrets lie waiting to be discovered in this necropolis. In the decades since its discovery, one thing that has become clear is that it's not the only pyramid in the area. In 1994, the German scholar and author Hartwig Hausdorff traveled to the area outside Xi'an, in the same province as the Emperor's necropolis. Here, he took photographs and videos of many pyramids. Indeed, he claims that when he examined the 18 minutes of footage he filmed, he was able to count over 100 pyramids. China places many restrictions on the exploration of its pyramids, banning any excavation of them. It is thought that the area where the Great White Pyramid stands is now a government rocket launch pad and thus a no-go area for civilians and visitors. With such restrictive policies put in place by the Chinese government, it may be the case that the greatest works of ancient man will remain hidden until a future day, when a new Valley of Kings is opened up for the world to marvel at.